Happy Monday to you. It's Kay from Hi Meat Home. So today I'm gonna to be talking about how I organize my pantry in my small space. Now I'm, I'm going to say that we do have a lot of pantry space for a small apartment. However, uh, I'm gonna give you some tips and tricks on how I organize it. And I know some of this stuff is really high maintenance, but I promise it's totally worth it. So if you're interested in uh, some pantry storage ideas, stay tuned. And as always, if you're not already subscribed to Hub Neat Home, please press the subscribe button. It's totally free, you'll get, and if you press the bell, you'll get notifications every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday when I upload. All right, let's get to the pantry. Okay, so I'm going to first of all explain that our kitchen, although um, small by most, I guess, house standards, um, is has a lot of storage actually. So here are our kitchen cabinets. As you notice, they're actually very, very tall. I really have a hard time getting up to the top part, which is why I have a step stool. I'll talk about that in a minute. And they go all the way around here. So we have a lot of storage room in our kitchen, which I'm very grateful for. Um, but you'll notice we do have some stuff that's out on the counter, so I'll talk about that first. So the first thing I want to talk about is our little snack bin here. So I noticed that uh, when when we'd come home from work or just you know we're feeling very peckish, it's it's a lot of a it's a lot to think about to go grab a snack. So I have this little bin out here. I actually got this from Marshalls, I believe. Anyway, it's open in the front so you can just grab whatever. Um, I find that a lot of snacky things are in bags and don't actually stack well. So we've got some banana chips, we've got some dried fruit here, some rice cakes, some bars, a little piece of chocolate that's hiding down here. And uh, these are these fun little Belgian waffles. Um, they're just out here so you could just like not think about it and just grab it. I normally don't like to have stuff on the counter like that, but I just have that there and that is good enough for me to be able to grab something and it's not too cluttery because it's contained in this little magic little container here. And we also do have a bread box. Uh, this is the other thing I really like uh, for storing. Wow, we got a lot of bread in there. Uh, I don't actually eat bread very much. My husband is very uh, is the bread lover in the family. Um, but we store our bread here. It keeps things um, nice and uh, nice and dry and cool, um, and it's very attractive. And the other thing about the bread box is if if you know if we're really pressed for storage, look at we can see our my reflection. Hi, you can actually store things on top of the bread box and get a little extra storage that way. So always using that vertical space. So now let's look inside the pantry. So this is our main pantry where we have a lot of our dry goods and uh, canned goods. So the first thing I'm going to draw your attention to is this little raised step shelf for cans. It's not an entirely perfect system because you cannot see the label um, behind it about what exactly is it, but all you have to do is move, just move something to the side or just like lift it up a little bit. I can see that there's like black beans back here, pinto beans, Kennedy, cannellini beans, Kennedy beans? I wonder what those are. Uh, kidney beans is what I meant to say. We actually uh, eat a lot of beans and we have a lot of canned goods, so this is really helpful for us. Um, it's great because this cabinet is actually 10 inches deep. So we're sort of maximizing the storage. I find that when people put cans in places, they put cans behind cans behind cans. And then when they go to look for, uh, let's say, a can of chicken broth, and they don't realize the one that they bought, you know, a couple months ago is in the back, they just go out and buy a new one and bam, you're like now buying double of what you already needed. So always make sure that you can see everything in the pantry and that is the, going to be the main theme here. Uh, so we've got all of our canned goods uh, just hanging out here and this <laughs> this is not a can but this is actually a diced tomato so that's hanging out there too. I'm just going to turn him that way so he's nice and cute like that. Um, and the next thing I'm going to draw your attention to is the dry goods storage. So these are the little, these are little slim containers. They are from the container store. They are not super cheap. Um, so um, I will link them down below, but there are definitely um, more affordable alternatives. I will actually link those down below as well. I'll find some other alternatives, but I liked these because they were a very slim shape um, and I could maximize my storage space here. So we actually um, eat our dinners and lunches uh, using a meal plan. So we do use a variety of things. 
Um, I'm sorry for the reflection of the window in the back is like a little intense, I'll actually move. Um, so we have a lot of rice, varieties of rice. We have some wild rice here, some, I think this is basmati rice, and we've got lentils, and this is instant rice actually. We've got some brown rice here, always use that, so we always have the most of that. And this is arborio rice for risotto, uh, which I don't make a lot, but I do sometimes. We've got some wild rice up here, and farro, and this is actually panko breadcrumbs. Now I have moved I have moved items into larger and smaller containers depending on how much has left. Um, panko breadcrumbs I don't actually use that much um, so I just have them up here in this little container and you'll notice I do have a label here saying what it is and when it is best by. So this is panko and it's best by the 18th or not the 18th but the but May of 2018. So these are label once labels and you just slide them on to the container and they actually can withstand uh, being in the dishwasher and being washed. So what I've done is I've taken the items, the food, out of its original container because sometimes you'll buy rice in a box and rice in a bag and it doesn't actually, it doesn't stack very well and doesn't store very well in your cabinet. So I've taken the extra step of decanting all of my dry goods into the same containers so that I can see what's left. I'm gonna take one of these out so you can actually see it. On the bottom of the container, I've put what it was and when it expires. And for the most part, I pretty much know how to cook rice. Um, I pretty much am used to what the ratios are, so I don't put directions on all of the things in here on how to cook them, but I do have them on some. Um, let's see, oh here. I have actually, for some of them, taken the directions off of the actual packaging and taped them to the bottom of the container. Um, so, cause I don't normally cook farro all the time, so I forget how to cook it. So that way I always remember how to do it. And on a couple of these, try and find which one. Oh, was it this guy? No, it was not that guy. I'm gonna take them all out. Actually, it was this guy. Um, I used a very special label holder which was you can stick it on here and I've taken the directions from the packaging and placed it inside so this one I'm not sure is going to be um, the best when it comes to like washing the container I think that you're gonna have to avoid getting this wet but it seems very sticky um, so when I wash this container I do very carefully to sort of wash around this label holder. I was just trying this out, but this is a pretty good method for things you don't have to wash very much. Um, and I just stuck the instructions <laughs> on the inside here. This is very hard to do with one hand. <laughs> there! <laughs> anyway, I was trying this for a while. I don't think it's the best method, but I think it's pretty cool. All right, anyway put this stuff back and we will talk about other things that doesn't go there anyway as well as being very organized I do think they look very aesthetically pleasing as well and I get uh, excited to cook instead of getting sort of overwhelmed by look in the pantry I'm like what am where am I gonna find which rice boom it's right there and then and there are things hiding in the back but they're things I don't use very much like back here there's just a little shredded coconut that I uh, eat with breakfast sometimes. The good thing about these containers and sort of decanting everything is that it's pretty much a good line of defense against pantry moths and bugs and things like that. So that is another motivating factor of decanting everything into a container with a nice gasket such as these. Um, so I, the other thing I've done in this pantry is compartmentalize everything to its own little zone. So here we've got a couple zones going on. We've got the can zone and we've got the dry goods rice zone. And here we've got popcorn action going on and it's everything we need to make the popcorn. We've got uh, the actual popcorn. Some of these are like fancy popcorns like on the kernel, on the cob. And uh, we've got little tiny itty bitty baby popcorns. This is, this is all like my husband's like excited popcorn thing. He's like a big fan of popcorn. And we've got bags in order to make the popcorn. So. Everything in one place is really the way to go. In your pantry, you've got a little zones going on. So he lives up there and it's labeled with a cute little um, chalkboard marker that I will link down below. <laughs> and this container is from uh, InterDesign and it's a little like pantry bin. These are, in my opinion, a little bit pricey, um, but you can certainly just use any clear bin that you can buy. 
We also have a little zone for uh, produce that needs to go in a cool, dry place, such as tomatoes and potatoes. Uh, I've got some potatoes here for now. I do have a little drawer dedicated to some other items. I'm experimenting with uh, which things can't live in the same space. There is an ethylene issue, I believe, with potatoes um, and onions next to one another. So the onions and garlic can hang out, but uh, the tomatoes usually can hang out somewhere back there as well. Tomatoes, again, don't last very long. Um, they don't have a long shelf life. You just eat them. They're not meant to be hoarded. They're just meant to be eaten. <laughs> anyway, so here we've got a little zone for um, it's condiments, sauces, and we've also got some extra cans of uh, fishes here. You got some canned trout, canned salmon, and um, some, I think these are like sardines. What are these? These are most definitely uh, sardines. Yep. And uh, we've got honey, we've got peanut butter, almond butter, and in this little tiny container here, we have the little sauces you can get from the fast food place and a couple of sugars from the Dunkin' too. You can tell we live in New England because there's always, there's always some Dunkin' sugars as well. Little soy sauce. Again, we don't keep a lot of these just because um, I don't use these very much, but in a pinch, if you're you know out of ketchup or out of sugar or out of soy sauce, this is a little, good handy way to go and way to contain them so they're not as crazy up here. So also keep the Beano in here because sometimes sometimes you need this while before you're eating and you're just forgetting that you needed the Beano but you're like oh maybe I should like get it out before I eat this like burrito bowl that's full of pinto beans so you'll feel better. Um, and we've got backup uh, better than bouillon as well. And this is a little turntable. Um, that fits in here really nicely. It's actually, as you can see, it's a little bit deeper than the cabinet himself, itself, but it, the door does close and it fits in here really nicely. So the, uh, the shelves are only 10 inches deep, um, which I'm, I'm grateful for and uh, it's frustrating at the same time because certain things like this won't fit in here perfectly, but because the door is like a shaker style, um, it, it gives me a little bit of leeway in terms of space. So up here we're getting into the high high place of things that I really can't reach on an everyday basis. I can actually reach these cereals, again, decanted out of their original packaging into cracker jars. You can get these from Michael's, they're super cute. They, again, they keep the bugs out, they're really awesome. And again, I have taken the label off of the actually original packaging and taped it to the back of the um, jar because I just refill this with oats. Um, these are, um, like the Irish cut oats, like the whole oats, not the rolled oats, and they do, they are a little bit more fussy than the rolled oats, so I just have that there just to remind me how to make them, um, and I just refill this every time, so, um, and it looks really pretty, and I've got the farina here, which is also known as a cream of wheat, I guess, got some kicks, even though we don't have any kids, I love kicks, <laughs> and we've got some raisin bran, which looks like I'm gonna have to buy another, um, box of Raisin Bran. One box actually fits in that uh, cracker jar, so uh, well, not not the big family style box, but like the regular box, so I'm just going to have to buy another box from Whole Foods. But I love that Raisin Bran. It's very good, very tasty. Anyway, the next uh, zone here is the nuts and seeds. Uh, there is some philosophy and uh, theory that these are actually better in the refrigerator. Um, we don't eat enough of these to really like know if that's true or not, but I think it's true. But right for right now, they're living in this um, pantry and they are not rancid as of yet. We still eat them every now and again. Do you like a good almond action? Um, but I uh, actually, let's, let's talk in the comments. Do you keep nuts and seeds in the fridge or do you keep these in the pantry with the rest of your dry goods? Let me know, let me know down in the comment. All right, here's where we get some of the backup stuff. We've got um, salt and peppercorns. That is basically backup uh, salt and peppercorns. We've got different kinds of salt as well because we are just special like that. And up at the very top, I'm actually gonna get a step stool because this is kind of ridiculous. So if you watched my um, under the sink organizing video, you'll know that my step stool is actually right here. So here's my pantry and here is my step stool. So if I need to get to a higher shelf, I just grab this little guy, I open him up Boom, I'm like seven inches taller. Okay, now I can show you up here. So we've got some backup spices up here. 
Um, these are the ones that are not currently in my spice drawer, which I will show you right now in a cutaway. Um, the bottles, the spice bottles I bought for the spice drawer are a little smaller than standard size. So these are just like the backup ones I will just refill from. Um, it's worth it to me to have these up here. I mean, I really can't reach way up here to grab this very easily. So these are just the backup spices. And we've got, it says miscellaneous, but it's really just like random stuff like sauces and we've got some shredded flaked coconut back here and this is like some um, maple syrup block or something like that. And speaking of maple syrup, <laughs> we've got a lot of maple syrup. I do, uh, my husband's family is uh, French Canadian and every time we see them they bring us a new can of maple syrup. So we've got enough maple, maple syrup for like pancakes for a long time and things for a long time. So that's where we put that stuff. We do love this maple syrup though, it's very tasty. Um, and next to it, we've got the pasta and pasta sauce sort of zone. Um, we contain it in these little containers. These are from the container store. I will link these, they're very cute. Um, but truth be told, we actually don't eat pasta that much. So that's why they're way up here on the top. It's just, I mean, it's really rare. It's every once in a blue moon. The next zone I want to introduce you to is the one next to the other pantry. It is sort of the um, accessories zone. So here I have all of my cooking oils on this uh, turntable like I had in the other one. This turntable actually doesn't um, fit well in here because of this lip here on the bottom. So I put a little um, lid from an accessory box from the container store so it raises it up just enough so it spins perfectly. So, so I, I hacked that to get that to work for me. Um, but we again, we do use a, um, a meal planning service called Meal Lime, and it requires you to buy your own groceries and then cook your meals. So we have all of these different varieties of oils and vinegars, and we actually do go through these a lot um, in making our meals. And it's this has been the most helpful way to store um, things like this. No, you know, you'll notice the cabinet is not completely filled and I actually really like that. Um, that there's no confusion. Every time I need to grab something, I'm like, where's the cornstarch? There it is. <laughs> where's the coconut oil? There it is. We do have a little like backup olive oil. That's the only thing we have extra. Um, but I really love this system. It's my favorite. Of course, I will link this down below. And above that is um, some more vinegars. We've got uh, white vinegar and apple cider vinegar up here hanging out like this. We only have this little um, bottle holder like this because I had these. I don't recommend that you store your vinegars like this. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. It's just I was using something I already had. And this is baking soda. I did decant the baking soda just to make it easier to use. These are pop canisters um, from OXO. And the reason I like these so much is because they have a really wide mouth and they're easy to get into. So all you have to do is do that, boom, you're in. And you can like stick a, uh, a measuring scoop in there really easily. And yes, it says the chemical formula for baking soda. I am just a big fat nerd, I'm sorry. <laughs> and, and ironically next to it is sugar. <laughs> so those are, I love pop canisters. I think they're really cool. Um, you, again, if you don't like plastic, you can certainly use glass, uh, which I probably will step up to. But in the meantime, I'm using pop canisters and I really like them. Um, here is my baking area. So again, I don't often bake. I'm more of a cook, uh, but everything I need for baking is here in one little container. So we've got uh, sweet cocoa, oh, I'm sorry, unsweetened cocoa, got chocolate chips here, we got a little, um, what is this, yeast, got some baking cups here, a little baking powder, and this is like vanilla extract and like cinnamon and cloves and things like that, some um, dye. Um, I did actually used to, well I haven't made them in a while, marshmallows from scratch. If you guys haven't had a marshmallow that was made from scratch or a homemade marshmallow, you've never had a marshmallow. I'm just digressing from this pantry door here. Marshmallows made from scratch are uh, amazing. You need to experiment, have one. Maybe I'll make a video, who knows. <laughs> anyway, so this is all the baking stuff. So when I'm baking, I'll just bring this whole container down. And when I'm done, I'll just put it back up here. And it looks really cute. And then up there, I've got some more um, uh, OXO containers, <laughs> again, it's flour, but just the chemical formula for like starch. Because 
a flour is actually a pretty complicated uh, molecule. And I've got some regular flour and bread flour and then some brown sugar, which didn't really have a chemical formula either. It's like molasses and sugar. So I just put the label on there. Anyway, so that is my accessories or sauces cabinet. And we've got one more to go. We've got the sort of random extra cabinet. So here we have a tea situation. We have a lot of tea between the two of us and we needed a way to store it all. We've got, we actually got rid of a lot of tea in our, in our when we moved last year because we just had a whole big old buttload of tea. Uh, both of us are like tea hoarders and we were keeping all this tea and we were just, I decided to like, we were like, this is nuts, nuts. We need to downsize. So this is what we've got left. And it's a lot of tea, but we do, we do drink a lot of tea. Um, and here we've got the ever forbidden treats shelf here. So this is just treats. This is like little Ghirardelli chocolates and like M&Ms and anything sweet that is like candy and bad for you lives there. Um, it's kind of up high, so I can't reach it very well. Um, and just up there, we've got some storage for water bottles and um, the soda stream action up there. And that is our whole pantry storage situation. Uh, if we do run out or something or we're getting ready to run out of something, we do have a little um, white, uh, little wipe board on our refrigerator. So if she were, were running, running low on sugar, so my husband wrote that on there just to remind us to buy sugar on the next time out. And if I am labeling a container, I just have a little drawer right here next to all the pantry action. And I got this little, it's like a little um, index card container, but I got it from the dollar store. And inside, it has everything I need to do like labeling action on any of my containers. So I have the label once labels ready to go if I have a new container or if I have a different container. I got my chalkboard ink here, super cute. And I have a couple of Sharpies. You can actually write on the, the label once with Sharpies. They actually, this is the pen that's included. Um, actually not my favorite, but a Sharpie is just as good. And I also, store the eraser for the label once here. The eraser works really well. It erases um, permanent marker on the labels. Um, and I actually have a few extra labels in here. I have some chalkboard labels, <laughs> which I used to use on my old containers, but these are sort of not that trendy anymore. I don't know, maybe they are. Do you guys still use these? These? I think they're super cute. Um, and then I've got some of those other labels that you have to, um, put the label in. I don't think I'm gonna use these on food storage containers. I think I'm gonna use these other wear in the other, other wear, in other places in the house. Um, but I've got them all in my little dollar store container right here so that they're easily accessible. And then when I'm done with it, just pop it back in the drawer right here. Boom. Oh, and maybe some of you are wondering where uh, the coffee is and the tea, <laughs> maybe, I don't know. But in as a general rule, I try to like to store things where I use them. So here's our coffee maker um, and above it is our little <laughs> liquor cabinet. And also, boom, coffee action. I've got massive backup coffee there because I, I recently got tired of running out of coffee. Do you know that's like super traumatizing when you're running out of coffee and you're like, <gasps> What am I gonna do? So I've decided to just start buying coffee in bulk and here is the situation. I put my current coffee like right in this little container here um, and he's got a little like spoon, double-sided spoon here. I think I got some crate and barrel, super cute. It's for like regular brew and this like big side is if you want bold flavor. <laughs> I don't know what that voice was. Anyway, that is the coffee sitch. Hey. All right, so that's it, you guys. Did you like my pantry tour? Did you find it inspiring in any way? Let me know down in the comment below, or like this video, or if you didn't like it, dislike this video. <laughs> anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video, and I will see you in the next one on Wednesday. Bye, you guys. Stay neat. Efficiency. So on the bottom of these, whoa. Oh my gosh. Whoa. Oh my God.